this request is simple. Could you please explain how to select colors for an underpainting? We have some choices there. Sometimes people uh, confuse the terms underpainting uh, and undertoning. Now, to undertone a canvas before you start, you're doing something sort of like I've done here. You're putting a transparent uh, tone of color over the entire painting. Underpainting implies that you have actually applied thicker paint uh, and then you're, uh, than, than the toning would be and that you're building the painting on that underpainting. Now, I usually think of underpainting as the block-in stage of a painting, but you're going to find varying artists that will use varying definitions of both terms. So I want to talk about undertoning. I think perhaps this is what that's what this person meant, because if you are underpainting in block-in, you're going to use pretty much the same colors that you'll use as you finish the painting. But if you're toning the canvas first, you're making you're sort of making a mother color decision. That's one way to do mother color where uh, a single color is going to be present throughout a painting in, to one degree or another. But there are several reasons why you may choose one way or another. Now there are a lot of people that will, will say as a requirement that your underpainting needs to be the complement of a color that is predominant in a painting. Um, the others will say that it needs to be the same as an, uh, uh, maybe a predominant color in the painting. Um, and so there are various ways to go with that. But each way, each method is going to give you different results. So here's what I suggest. I suggest you rely on the color wheel, of, as always. For one thing, uh, let's look at these two photographs. They are totally different. The colors are totally different. In one, we see a lot of orange coming through blue here. We see a lot of blue right here. Blue coming through more or less red, violets, and oranges here. And then we see oranges there. Well, if we wanted to lean the painting a little bit more towards cool, then we might choose, uh, we might choose a blue and then choose an analogous color to blue for the underpainting. Uh, if we want to emphasize the warm, we might choose uh, the orange or a uh, yellow orange, and then, or we could choose colors that are analogous to yellow orange as the undertone. What's going to happen when you do that? The underpainting is go the undertone is going to influence the whole painting. Most likely, going to influence the whole painting somehow. Here you would, do, you would not necessarily uh, use a rule such as always tone your canvas uh, burnt in or always tone your canvas this, that, and the other that I have heard people do. But you could decide, do you want to emphasize the warmth in this one? So if you want to emphasize the warmth, you see that the warms are in yellows and yellow oranges, so your underpainting would fall somewhere right here. Or you could also do an underpainting of yellow-green and emphasize the warmth that leans towards green. So you make logical decisions based on what you want to emphasize. Um, on the other hand, if you wanted this one to go more cool, then you could, you could actually use an underpainting of blue-green right here. We see lots of blue-green, especially coming through the darks in there. Or you could simply go to a green or go to a blue. Now, what I'd like to show you, and I want to show you a way that you can make your decisions so that you might be able to sort of figure out which kind, if you want an underpainting, uh, you don't always have to have an underpainting. You could just simply start in, like I do with the no tan and then the block in without an under or undertone. It's not necessary, but if you would like it, if you would like to get rid of the white canvas before you start painting, this is a good way to do it. So, let's go with this paint. Let's go with this photograph, and I'll show you some options of what you might do as an experiment to make decisions on which way you think you'd like for that thing to go. Now, what I'm going to do there, 
let me, let, okay. Now what I'm going to do here, I have three different undertones already. Here, this is ultramarine blue. Uh, this is uh, quinacridone burnt orange, which is very, very similar to burnt sienna. And this is simply dioxazine purple. Uh, and there you can see I have thinned them with a solvent. In this case, I used Gamsol and just toned those areas in those three. Uh, what I'm going to do is to choose one color and show you how that one color appears in all three and then that gives, can give you a clue of, as to how you might make a decision uh, as to which tone you would like to emphasize or which temperature or which hue you would like to emphasize in your painting. So just to do this verbatim, you could or if you chose a, a blue, if you wanted it to lean more towards cool, even though there's lots of warm emphasis there. Uh, what I've got here, it's very, very simple, ultramarine blue and white. And I'm just going to use that combination to show you a comparison. So I'll get sort of a middle value uh, of ultramarine blue, mixture of ultramarine blue and white. Sort of a... Now... If I'm using ultramarine blue and white, say if you were to start in the sky, for example. Um, actually, I wouldn't use ultramarine blue and white for the sky. I'd add a little bit of uh, viridian to the ultramarine blue, just lean it a little bit more towards uh, what we're looking at there. But this is this is showing you how to do it in experiment. Now, you see when I put that on, how it blends with that underpainting? I go a little bit darker. And you see the darker blends still is even though it's a darker value it is still very very cool still blending with that now if you're putting if you put the warm color underneath it then you're going to see quite a contrast but you can allow the blue to come through the warm uh, I won't do that here I want to show you just this comparison of this one color all right now I'm going to do that same thing to this one now this is a compliment this is a the quinacridone burnt orange is a good complement for ultramarine blue. It is an orange, or leans a little bit more towards, uh, uh, in some cases, towards tiny, a little bit towards red orange. Okay, so I'm going to use the same. Now look, compare what's happening with the blue there and what happens with the blue there. You see how it's emphasized, but the orange has emphasized it. But if you pull it very lightly over it, you can let some of that orange pop through, and you can get that gray feeling that you feel in the sky right here. So I'll do a little bit more of that. Now you see how the color of ultramarine blue totally changes with that orange coming through and totally changes with the orange surrounding it. So even though I've under, uh, I've, I'm using a cool color on top of the warm, I can still lean the whole thing towards the warm by stroking this so that some of that orange comes through pretty much throughout. So I can sort of control there what happens between that blue and orange and there you see that the effects of the complement of blue and orange and then you can see how by adding the greens, the greens are going to kind of blend the the yellow uh, of the orange to yellow orange we see here is going to blend in here and you can cause the whole thing to lean more towards warm. You see a lot of the cool warm cool warm going on down here. So now, now you can see how, what difference that would be, how this could end up being a totally cool or leaning towards cool interpretation of this. And this one could end up being more of a warm interpretation. Let's see what purple will do. So I'll do the same thing. And watch, what, watch the difference in this color. How the color changes according to the color that's surrounding it. So if I put the blue here, you see how it, changes it feels more it feels more like it's leaning towards the towards the the red side you see it feels much uh the blue actually begins to feel maybe a little bit warmer it's a little difficult to tell uh, with the with the purple surrounding it and look at this blue let's get it a little bit darker in some areas just so that you see the the comparison and i really need to put it a little bit darker there too so that you can see the comparison I'll just do that now. All right, now, if you just focus on the blue, you see how different the blue is here. Same blue. We see how different it feels here and here and here. And now, with this blue, I can 
you know, a little bit, uh, allow a little bit of that uh, um, toned canvas to come through. You see how it changes to blue violet? Well, allow just a little bit of this canvas to come through. Whereas here, it changed a little bit more towards the warmer, even more towards uh, a sort of greenish blue here. So you see, you make your decisions based on what kind of interpretation you want. Uh, it doesn't help at all to follow rules, because if you follow a rule, you're going to end up doing the same thing over and over again. Then you got to remember the rule. But if you'll do experiments like, like this, where if you're looking at a scene and you're trying to make a decision about the uh, which way you want all the colors to lean, then take a scrap sheet of canvas like I've got here, tone with three different possibilities, and you can get the possibilities here, or base them on the color wheel like I talked about in the beginning. And I think you'll find it'd be very interesting to see how an undertone can affect the qual or the interpretation of the entire painting. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.